Hi everyone, this video is part of the React Pagination Simplified, and you are here now. Please watch the overview first if you want to know more about the details before we dive in. Remember, I give the link of the playlist and the GitHub link in every part of the service. Okay, let's start. We'll be using the React Paginet library. First, let's install the React Paginet library by typing npm install React Paginet in our terminal. Done. Now we can just use its components. Before we use the React Paginet component, let's see the most important attributes that you should know to make an easy and awesome pagination. If you listen to my explanation about how pagination works in the previous video, this will become really easy for you. So, React Paginate has important data and behavior attribute like page count, of course, margin page display, page range display, on page change, React Paginate also has important styling attributes for UI, like container class name, page class name, previous class name, next class name, break class name, and active class name. And there's three more important attributes that is really optional because it already has default value like previous label, next label, and break label. Looks easy, right? Let's dive in. Start our React app, open your app.js, and remove all the boilerplate code. I will just keep the div class name app element. Use the React Pagina component and just put page count to see fast result for now. Set it to 10. Save and see it in the browser. Okay, we can see all the elements we want, but it's so messy. How about we continue with styling the pagination element first? There's six classes that we need to assign so we can generate good pagination components. For the container, give the pagination container class name. For other containers, just give the class name based on its own component's name. For example, page class name use page. Previous class name use pref, and so on. Done. If we refresh the page right now, there's no doubt that it won't change at all. Let's create the CSS styling for it. Open your app.css. Since this is not a CSS tutorial, I think I will just give the full style in the GitHub code. You can check it and just copy it, or you can even style it yourself. Okay, let's check the result. I think this is nice. Now we need the data. For data, we'll use the API from JSON placeholder website. I'll give the link in the video description. And also use the basic JavaScript fetch function. How do we use page and limit in this fake API call? This website gives us two parameters which are underscore page and underscore limit. We'll use that. Get back to our editor. To make our API call when the component is already mounted or in ready state, we will use the use effect hook from React. If you want to know more about use effect hook, please visit my other tutorial about it. I'll give the link in the video description. Now let's just type use effect. And inside the callback function, type our fetch code. Fetch URL. Fetch function is to return a promise. 
you can access the result using then keyword after running the fetch. But I prefer a synchronous like process, so I'll use the async await method. Create new async arrow function called fetch users. Then inside it, I can just do this. Request and await fetch the URL. And when we receive the data, we can retrieve it to JSON data like this. Let's make the result appear in the console. Just type console.log requested data. Don't forget to call our fetch users function in the use effect hook. Oh no, we got an error. Why? Let's check it out. Ah, oh, we just forgot to declare our fetch user function using the let keyword. You can use for or const for this purpose, but it's better to not use for keyword. Okay, from here, we can see the data they give us. And for our pagination system, we need the total page, and we need the user's data to be shown. Now, we have a problem here. Do you notice that the JSON data doesn't give us total page or total data for us? Usually, the API will give us the total page, so we just need to relay it to our pagination component. Let's assume the API gives us at last the amount of data. So we will hard code it, and now we can count the total page we must show in our pagination component. Calculate our total page using math dot sale function it will round up any decimal value and don't forget to capture our users data too before we apply the data to the ui let's create one more few component which is for displaying the users we'll use just two properties from the data which is name and email so I'll create it just like this, simple and easy. Now let's style it. Again, just like before, you can see the style from the GitHub URL. The class name used for user list components, user list container, user container, user name, and user email. Let's see the result. Okay, I think this is quite nice. Now we have the view. We can use this view to display the data we have from the API. How to connect the data with the view? In React, we can just use the useState method imported from React library. Let's do that. If you want to know more about useState, you can watch my other tutorial. Just like before, I'll leave the link in the video description. Okay, let's do this. Remember that data we get? Instead of just displaying it to the console, let's update it to our state. We have two data here, which is the user's data and also our hard-coded total page. That's why we will create two use state. The first one for the user's data. And the second one for the page count. Previously, we just used static data to display the user list view. Let's update it to use our user's data state. Make it loop through the data using the map function, 
and return the display with our data. Don't forget that if we loop components like this, the component needs a key. Let's give the key value to an index that we get out of the box from the map function. The index right here only a number increments. And don't forget to give page count state to our pagination component. Now we can just update users data and the page count using the data we get from the API. Done! Let's save it and see the result. How about it? Isn't it great? But the page change system still does not work. Yeah, yeah, I get that. We'll make it work now. As you already know, we need to ask for user's data on the page number we want to get, and we already asked for page 1. So, what do we need to finish this? If you say it, make the fetch function accept page number, it's partially correct. But if you also say that we need to manipulate the URL to ask for page number that we asked for, then yes, you are right. Let's do this. On the fetch user function, ask for page parameters and then give the default page to 1. Check if it's still working as intended. Yes, it is. Actually, we already knew that. But we still have to make sure because we don't have a test on this website. Next, we'll just use the on page change on the React page unit. It gives us the page number we want. And we'll use it to call the fetch users with the page number we want. We can see that the page is an object, and we have to use the selected property from the page. Done. Let's try this. Hmm. Something is wrong. The data on page 1 and 2 are the same. Okay, let's check it. Print the page selected to the console, let's see what's the value we clicked on. Ah, now we know that the React Pagination component uses an index from zero. Then we can just add one, and it will work great. Okay, let's try again. Perfect. Basically, our pagination course is finished here. But I want to show you how to make all of our coding here become reusable, not only on the pagination component, but also on the list view component too. We'll continue this in the next part that I give a title, Powerful Refactor to create reusable and easy to maintain components. Thank you for watching. See you in the next part.